Thawaite Om Nais. And thank you so much, Kurt, for having us and for facilitating this. Uh, I know we're really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Jenny Luongo, as Kurt mentioned, and I'm the NJCL Kurtaman Chair. Uh, my students call me Parwa. Uh, some of you may already know that. So you're welcome to uh, think of me as Ms. Luongo or Parwa. It started out as um, kind of a, a, a statement about my um, height. Uh, uh, maybe a slightly rude statement about my height. No, they didn't mean it as a rude statement. They meant it as a term of endearment. So I've embraced it. Um, and I teach at St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Austin, Texas, but I'm so excited to be here with Ben Van Gelder, uh, who comes from another part of the country, and I'll let him introduce himself. Oh, Ben, I think you're, yeah, there we go. I'm on mute. Uh, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that in 2020, uh... Yeah, never mind. Uh, my name is Ben Van Gelder. Uh, really, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for joining us tonight. A um, bit of background, I, I started taking Latin when I was in sixth grade, and despite not really taking it since college, I haven't really been able to keep away from NJCL. So, uh, you know, I'm now uh, 29 going on 30, but uh, still very much as, uh, I guess you would say, uh, tied into the JCL ecosystem as ever. So thanks for joining us. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And just to embarrass you a little bit, Ben, I uh, remember watching you play uh, Kurt Thomann in, when you were in high school. Uh, and it's just been a pleasure to work with you in uh, the moderating uh, group. And uh, I'm, ex I'm really excited about this new project of ours. Yeah, um, you have told me that before we started, you're going to embarrass me like that. So um, <laughs> if you haven't thought about that before, the next time it'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, you know, just expect it now, I think. Okay. Just expect it. Um, so, uh, Kurt mentioned that we're currently calling this show Kurt Hammond Tonight, but um, we're open to suggestions. So, please feel free if you've got a catchier uh, name for our Thursday night Kurt Hammond on JCL live show, uh, you know, just drop it in the comments. We're, we're totally open. And uh, later on, we'll go through those and see if we see any uh, winners for uh, our new show name. Uh, we're going to start tonight, uh, we hope, um, by uh, maybe engaging some people who um, don't know what Kurtaman is, haven't played Kurtaman before, don't know why you would want to play Kurtaman. Um, so we know that, we hope that we've got a, a lot of um, really uh, successful Kurtaman players watching and lots of people who love playing Kurtaman watching. Uh, and so we hope that those of you who are watching will pass on this link uh, for this episode to um, maybe people who haven't played the game before or maybe a teacher who... Um, um, uh, hasn't coached Kurt Hammond before, hasn't started a team before, because we really uh, want to make sure that we're um, including everybody and growing the game as much as we can. Um, so, Ben, shall we just go ahead and uh, share share my screen? Yeah. Um, with that, and uh, go ahead and get get going on a, a little bit of content about um, what this is and. Um, so we realize that most of you probably already know what Kurtaman is. So this might be a, a quick refresher for a lot of you all, but just in case you're, you know, if you're sort of curious about what Kurtaman is, I've never heard of it before. If you clicked on the wrong YouTube link and meant to be on some music video, but ended up here, we're going to, we're going to start from square one. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, hopefully to um, engage you, whether you are new to Kurtaman or not, um, we are going to have you, uh, if you'd like to, um, hook up to this Pear Deck. So you can do so by on your phone or on uh, another device, um, going to joinpd.com. Um, and then they always have these catchy phrases to um, help you remember the code. It never helps me, Ben. I'm going to be honest, uh, but the phrase today is troubling pears neatly zip troubling watermelons. So uh, I was trying to test this out last time we were preparing for the episode and I kept typing in the wrong code and it kept putting the random words underneath that I was typing and I thought it was just making fun of me for putting in the wrong code. <laughs> uh, it feels a little bit that way when you're typing in the code. Um, but our, our code tonight is TPNZTW. And um, if you want to hook up, we are going to have some opportunities to answer some Kurt Hammond questions. Um, I believe that the questions we've got in this deck are, are 
uh, I think actual questions from NJCL. I think most of the questions I pulled tonight are actual questions from um, former tournaments. Um, so um, even if you didn't get hooked up before we get started, obviously, um, for those of you who don't know, we're on a, about a 30 second delay um, on YouTube. So that means that um, sometimes we're going to start things before you've gotten a chance to type everything in. Um, so you can still type in that code TPNZTW even after we get started. It's very exciting. Um, so let's let's go ahead and get started talking about Kurtaman. Um, so uh, we said we're going to start from the very beginning. What is Kurtaman? Well, uh, Kurtaman is a quiz bowl style game. Um, that's designed for students who are taking Latin or Greek or classical civilization courses. And um, we hope that it allows students to show their knowledge of all these things that they're learning in classes, um, from the language to ancient people to cultures. And we hope also that we're working these days to really um, bring um, these topics into the modern world by looking at the relationships between la the Latin language and English, for instance, and all sorts of things. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking a lot about why this is so compelling and why this is so fun um, for the students who participate. Um, so students who are hooked into the Pear Deck at TPNZTW, you probably noticed that you have something that you can drag. Um, and so feel free to drag that heart icon to the thing that excites you or interests you most about Kirtaman. Um, and I think that um, I'm seeing their I'm seeing their icons going all over the place, Ben. We have some icons on Latin. Um, we have some icons on competitive. I like that. Oh. Um, we've got a lot of people who have highlighted the um, language and all the topics that are involved. So it looks like we've got um, diverse interests here, which I'm glad of. A lot of love. And um, so, Here's just some pictures of people playing Kurtaman at tournaments. Um, I, these are from kind of a variety of different tournaments across the country, across location, across even time. You can probably tell some of these are uh, more recent pictures than others. Um, but the key takeaway here is everyone is having a ton of fun. It's just, uh, it's its own, uh, you know, <laughs> I've heard it described as somewhat cultish in, in, in the sense of just how enthusiastic students are about it, but you really don't know until you play it. Um, just one, how much fun it is in the time and time you're doing it. And two, just the memories that it creates of uh, just wonderful community, wonderful friends, and um, obviously the competitive element, uh, which we all enjoy. Absolutely. I, I tell my students that I'm excited when they learn stuff, but I'm more excited about the friendships they're going to take away from the game. So basic 101 on the rules, uh, in case you're among the people who happen to click on the wrong YouTube link, uh, the rules of Kurtaman are there are four players per team, uh, 20 toss-ups per round. So one, one whole round will be well, 20 toss-up questions that are each worth 10 points. If you get the toss-up, you get 10 points, plus you get two bonus questions per toss-up. And any player can answer the toss-up question, but only one player from each team can try. So if your teammate buzzes and answers incorrectly, you are you as a team cannot buzz in again until the next question. And then the two bon bonus questions, which Boney and Latin are each worth five points. And then the teams can work together to answer those questions. So uh, the, the, we seem to have a lot of interest in all the different categories. So uh, we should probably tell people who aren't in the know what those categories are. Yeah, it's a good thing uh, we happen to, to make a chart for this. I'm, I'm glad people are curious <laughs> about the categories. Um, so, you know, broadly, broadly broken down, uh, historically, th this represents kind of at the NJCL level in particular, what we sort of aim for in, in terms of categories. So, you know, given that the majority of students that, that play Kurtaman have taken Latin, the bulk of it kind of centers around the Latin language in one way or another. And that includes things like translations, uh, you know, listening to passages and answering a comprehension question about what happened in the passage, vocabulary, derivatives, uh, you know, it kind of spans a lot of things within that Latin language category, but it all kind of centers around 
understanding and use of the Latin language. Shall we show them a sample question? Sounds perfect. Okay, so um, this is a sample language question. This is a derivatives question. Uh, ben mentioned we have all sorts of different types. According to its derivation, linguistics is the study of what? So this is just kind of an, an idea of the type of question that you might get in a Kirtaman round. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and choose from the different options. Um, I think... Uh, there we go. Um, you can see that a lot of people have chosen languages as the option. And that's what we were going for here since lingua, the Latin word means um, language or tongue. Um, I can understand why people chose mouths though, um, since tongue Thanks, certainly is related. Me. Yeah, I, I can see us getting a challenge on that. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the next category. So you may be thinking, oh man, you know, I, I love Latin, but I may not be as interested in sort of really, you know, studying that 24 seven, maybe I'm more interested in other things. Good news for you. There are other categories besides the Latin language itself uh, for just general sort of lovers of antiquity. So one other category is Roman history and life. Um, some of that is, you know, the history component, which is, you know, I think for the most part, we would say that it spans from 753 to 476, kind of the duration of what we consider to be, you know, the classical Roman empire. Um, you know, just dates, dates, events, you know, politicians, battles, things like that. And then the life component is, you know, for different periods, but I, yeah, I think most of it focuses on kind of the late Republic early empire, I would say kind of mm -hmm. you know, different traditions and customs uh, that Romans, you know, experience in their day-to-day -day lives, um, how they went to the baths, how they lived in their homes, you know, commerce, like all sorts of various elements of civilization. So we can do a sample question for this too. Um, in qua parte wheelae kibus paratus est. So um, you can see that some of these uh, history and culture questions sometimes appear in Latin, but it is um, relatively um, understandable Latin for all the players on the team since um, uh, our players are Latin students um, by and large. Um, as a matter of fact, I can't think of, I can't, I honestly think of a Kirtaman player that I've known of who wasn't taking Latin. Um, mm. So most people have selected in Kulina and the Kulina is the part of the house where the food is prepared. So bene factum to Scipuli. Uh, gesundheit. Um, <laughs> so another category, um, and it's funny actually, reflecting back, I think some people, especially when they get you know, involved in Kirtaman early on, they just kind of naturally gravitate to the subjects that kind of interest them. I, I've known a lot of friends that have just, you know, even before they knew Latin kind of were gravitated to the stories of gods and goddesses and, um, you know, the Iliad, the Odyssey. And so there's actually a whole category uh, if you are interested in that just for you, absolutely named Greco-Roman mythology. Yeah, this is an incredibly popular category for sure. Uh-oh, did I just skip that one? Okay, here we go. Which of the 12 Olympians was associated with horses and earthquakes and ruled over the sea is a sample mythology question. Um, there are different levels of Kirtaman. Um, we kind of showed that in the breakdown. Um, I'm old enough that I remember when they were called novice lower and upper, but now we call them novice intermediate and advanced. Um, and this is more of a, probably a novice mythology question um, asking about um, the Olympian gods and goddesses. And then of course they get incredibly detailed in advance because so many people love mythology. Um, but uh, you who said Poseidon or Neptune as the answer for horses, earthquakes, and ruled over the sea are absolutely correct. All right, our last category, which gets added in that advanced year. Yeah, so the, the idea there is, you know, as you take classes in Latin, eventually you start reading kind of the primary source literature. So it could be poets like Catullus and Ovid, uh, Virgil, or it could be prose like Cicero. Um, but, you know, as students start to acquaint themselves with the primary literature, a new, a new category of just what I would consider to be, you know, primarily the history of Latin literature is probably the way I would describe it. So who wrote what works? Uh, sometimes you get questions that are, you know, 
what does this line come from? Or, you know, what figures, well, I guess figures of speech would be language, right? Or it depends. No, no, they usually get classified as Latin literature. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, you Latin language lovers get a bonus question from time to time uh, in the <laughs> figure of speech questions, but um, that's included within this category of Latin literature that, um, you know, just personally speaking, I, I found myself liking a lot, especially as I, I learned Latin more and more. So um, if you're not, you know, if you, if you consider yourself at the novice or intermediate level and you're like, man, you know, can't, can't do literature, you know, it, it does come eventually. Good things come to those who wait. So. Um, so our sample literature question, quote, quote orationes cicero habuit in Catalinam. Uh, another one that um, could possibly be in Latin or um, may not be, but certainly if it's going to be in Latin, it's probably going to be a, a simpler, more direct question like this one asking about um, how many speeches Cicero gave against Catiline. Okay, Ben, I remember you being a great literature player. What what was your category though, before you hit advanced when the literature questions appeared? Um, I did mostly, I mean, mostly history and, and some Latin literature or Latin, um, just Latin language in general. Okay. That makes sense. The, one, makes the sense. one I never, the one I never touched was mythology. So even that, the Poseidon question was a bit of a toughie for me. So thanks for making <laughs> me feel good about that. <laughs> um, so, um, for those of you who have hit advanced, you may know that Cicero did give quatuor. He gave four speeches um, against Catiline. Um, so, one question we have for you all, um, we're always looking for ideas for new question types. And so, if you have them, certainly drop them in the comments and um, we are uh, like I said, um, constantly thinking about this question, how can we innovate the game? Um, what new question types would be interesting to players? So we'd love to hear um, some feedback from those of you, uh, maybe some coaches and players who are watching today. All right, Ben, you wanna talk about uh, all the options for where you can play Kurtaman? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll read some of the responses that students have and coaches uh, about, I'm actually curious to hear what they say about different, different question types. I am too. Um, um, well, this one's an easy slide. Uh, the question, you know, where and when is Kurtaman played? So if you've never played it before and you're interested, uh, the good news is it's, it's virtually all the time and in many, many different locations. Uh, and especially, you know, unfortunately, given 2020, and I think the way that ways that it's forced us to adapt to different, different aspects of life, uh, Kurtaman is certainly not exempt from that. And so most of these tournaments have actually migrated to a virtual format. Um, so if you've never tried it before and, and have any interest, feel free to reach out to Jenny, myself, or anyone else in the Kurtaman community. We're happy to kind of talk to you about what's out there. But, you know, what I would say is in a, in a sort of pre-2020 year, and, you know, presumably at some point in the future, you know, there's local tournaments that are hosted by schools that happens in several states. Uh, normally for states with a, you know, pretty active JCL, there, there are regional and state conventions that are, that's sort of the, the, the backbone of, you know, the, the normal academic circuit. Um, and then once a year uh, is the national convention of which uh, my fellow co-host is the boss lady of the entire Kurtaman tournament that happens there. So um you know, you, you definitely, you know, we can be, however we can be helpful in getting you access, like let us know. Uh, and then also kind of this fourth bullet point, one thing that started to pop up uh, is, you know, from time to time, uh, different colleges will host um, events, mostly, you know, former JCLers who are just so excited about the game and, and want to stay involved and also have it be as, as thorough and a year round experience as possible for students. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are all sorts of ways to get information. As Ben mentioned, you can absolutely reach out to us. My email address is super easy, kurtaman at njcl.org. You can look at the Kurtaman portion of the NJCL website for more information. Um, and then, of course, NJCL social media. There's a competitive Kurtaman group on Facebook. Um, all sorts of um, ways to reach out and get in touch with people. And um, I think the great thing about the Kurtaman community is we're always excited to um, talk to people about it and bring new people into it. Um, so speaking of talking to people, uh, we have uh, two guests tonight that we are um, 
honored and excited to talk to. Um, we have uh, Mr. David Jackson of uh, the Canterbury School and Dr. Emily Husino um, of the, the University of Rochester. Did I get that right, Dr. Husino? Okay, good. I suddenly had a panic. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to say the right school. <laughs> and um, we've uh, asked both of them to come talk to us tonight, um, along with uh, Ben and I, because um, these are people who have um, long time experience with Kurtaman, played Kurtaman as students, uh, but also have continued to be involved in the Kurtaman community. Um, so uh, we wanna ask you about this kind of um, niche game that uh, Ben mentioned, uh, kind of gives the impression that uh, maybe uh, there's like a cultish aspect to it because there's so much enthusiasm uh, behind it. Um, so it's not, uh, a, we, it's not a cult for the record. I just want to make that clear. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but uh, we'd love to hear from you all about um, kind of how you originally heard about Kurtaman, uh, what got you started playing Kurtaman, um, and, and what was interesting to you, and, and then, you know, also uh, how you've stayed involved. Um, so, uh, Dave, do you mind if we throw that over to you first? Yeah, no problem. Um, thanks for having me guys on, on the program. Uh, whatever we're going to call it, not sure, but I'm sure <laughs> it's really cool and creative or the JCLers will. Um, yeah, so how I got involved in Kurtaman, um, I took Latin as a high school junior, which is, I think, um, you know, not in line with most people's experience in JCL or Kurtaman, but I, um, I took Latin because I, I got really interested in history and I started reading a lot of history and a lot of philosophy. And I would come across these phrases like a priori and status quo antebellum. And it's like, what does this stuff mean? You know, so I decided to take Latin and um, walked into Miss Nancy Allen's classroom at Sandwood High School in Jacksonville, Florida. And she had a great JCL program and really love Kurtaman. And the students in the program love Kurtaman. And so I think it was maybe the second week of school, Miss Allen brought out the Kurtaman buzzers and she was asking us questions. And, you know, I'm hitting the buzzer going, oh, this is so much fun. This is, like, <laughs> yes, awesome. Um, and then she did the magic thing that so many teachers do. And she said, hey, you know, we're going to be doing this after school on like, Tuesday afternoons if you're interested. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll definitely go. And then I learned that you could not only answer questions about things in class, but you could also answer questions about history. And not only that, but you could study all this history. And not only that, and I think this was the moment that was really kind of honestly life-changing for me. The, the, all the older students would come and work with the novice students, the new students. And, you know, they would ask each other things like, oh, hey, did you study last night? Like, what'd you study last night? And the kids were like, yeah, you know, I studied last night. I was studying Oedipus in the House of Thebes. And, you know, it just had sort of had this really cool culture of a, of a, a group of people who really valued and loved to learn. And I love to learn. And so that kind of fueled my interest in Kurtaman. Uh, you had mentioned, Jenny, about, you know, friendships that your students form, and that's so true, and that's what I found in my high school experience, uh, and so we went to Kurtaman tournaments and had such a great time, and, you know, I was spending all my time reading notes and books about Roman history, and my friends were like, hey, man, you want to go hoop with us? And I'm like, no, I don't want to go hoop. I want to read Isaac Asimov's, Isaac Asimov's History of the Roman Republic, right? So, you know, or Carrie and Scullard's, um, you know, Roman history. So I just became immersed in it and loved it. And uh, that's how I got started in Kurtaman. That's awesome. Emily, what's your story about how you got going? Um, I mean, my story, I feel like is rather atypical. Um, I grew up in Virginia, public schools. And um, my mom is a Latin teacher, uh, but she took time off to have children. So her first year back teaching full time was my freshman year in high school, but she was teaching part-time a bit before then. And I started taking Latin in eighth grade. I mean, I, nobody really played Kurt Hammond. Like it just wasn't a thing. Um, but there was a state Kurt Hammond and it's Virginia. And so my mom's high school was going, like all those schools from the county were piling onto a bus. And uh, 
I had the opportunity because my mom was a teacher to play up with the second year students. Two of them. Um, so we went to the state Kretaman. Uh We scored about 80 points the whole tournament. And I think I took 60 <laughs> of them and I was a first year student. Um, we just had a good time on the bus and there was like a tradition of stopping at this one place for lunch. Um, shout out to Little John's Deli in Charlottesville. Um, <laughs> every Kretaman person in Virginia goes that place. Um, and, you know, I just had a good time, and, but that was it. Um, and, you know, my high school didn't play Kretaman, and, uh, but there was a local, like very local tournament um, every year. And the whole point of the tournament was that nobody had any experience. Like that was the only tournament most people played at all year. So in my second year, um, no one from my high school wanted to play. So I went and played by myself and won my level. And um, it really, like, I'm, I'm very competitive and kind of aggressive. And it just really sort of spoke to these, like, deep-seated needs I had to uh, act that out. And I really had enjoyed Latin and had been into mythology, you know, since I was a kid. And so it just, it just kind of clicked. And I just wanted to play. Um, so I... Um, never really had any teammates and I only ever got to play when I went to competitions. So I, like we had Kirtan practice, which was usually me like reading questions to the students the year below me. Um, there was, I like, I had no one to play against. Um, so the only time I really got to do anything was in tournaments. Um, and it's Virginia. So we might have nine tournaments a year. Um, and I was, I didn't really study. <laughs> I didn't study, I didn't practice, I would just like roll up at tournaments, play by myself, um, and just had a good time. Um, one really funny moment when I was, I felt like I was sort of well established as someone who played by herself. Um, we were just in a round waiting for it to start and the teacher who was moderating asked me where my teammates were. And I was like, oh, I was like listing off like Roman emperors. I was like, oh, it's like there's, you know, Caligula, Nero, and Augustus. And Claudius is homesick today. And then, you know, whatever, things continue in the room. And like five, 10 minutes later, the moderator looks at me. She's like, is the rest of your team coming? And I said, oh, no, it's just me. That was a joke. Like, I was like making all this up. Um, so yeah, it was just, I just had fun. Um, and I, I tried out for the state team for four years before I, I was runner up for three years. And finally my senior year, um, got a spot on the state team. Um, and that was, that was a really cool experience. Um, and those, those teammates I had on the state team are uh, people I'm still friends with. And they were going all the way back. They were people I played against in my very first tournament for real outside of the like little one in my hometown. Um, and we, you know, it's weird because we all sort of remember that like first sort of meeting years before. And then you know, so we ended up being friends later. So most of my like Kurt Hamid friends are from around the state and even, you know, people I met at nationals from around the country. So um, yeah, I had, a, I had a very like different experience from I think what a lot of people's Kurt Hamid experience was. Um, so, so for me, it was a weirdly kind of solitary activity most of the time. Mm -hmm. I love that you were bold enough though to go play by yourself. Well, I'm that competitive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've also, I've been, strangely enough, so I, I live in Virginia now, but I didn't until two years ago. I've been to Little John's a number of times in Charlottesville, and I had no idea I was on sacred ground. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Little John's, is, they actually just have had to close because of the pandemic. No. Oh. no. Um, so that was, that was like much sadness among like old school Virginia cartometers. So, you know, just kind of curious, you know, I mean, both y'all, thank you for sharing. Those are, um, you know, I think it's, it's just clear that <laughs> for both of you, it was just a very like authentic and genuine interest and in, like something that you found to be like kind of cool and expression of like your competitiveness, but also I hate to say your nerdiness, but I think we're in good company here. Um, you know, now, you know, it's been, you know, it's, it's now no longer high school. What, what sort of kept you around, you know, around the game, so to speak? 
I guess I'll go first. Um, so I actually, when I went to college, started volunteering um, at a school uh, in, so I went to the University of Florida and was just looking to kind of, a friend of mine and I just kind of give back a little bit, like coach some kids in Kurtaman. And so um, we got the name of this of a school from our Latin teacher and uh, called up the school and the, the teacher there was like, yeah, we'd love to have you come work with our kids. And so we did, and that was really fun. And, and the school, that school was Oak Hall School in Gainesville. And um, I was all set to go to law school and kind of, you know, ready to do that. And then, uh, you know, senior year of college, uh, really just started spending all my spare time, like writing questions, Kurtaman questions for the, for the kids at Oak Hall. And just kind of had this epiphany one day, I wanted to be a teacher. And so I was very fortunate that, that I was able to, to have a position there at Oak Hall. And really that's what kept me around just teaching. And I think just being very fueled by Kurtaman and wanting to give the experience that I had back to students and sort of share that with them. Um, because for me, it was something that really did change my life and that it, it really ignited a passion for, for learning, for studying, for literature in a way that I never had before. And so really Kurtaman was a vehicle for that. And I feel like with so many students, you, know, you have the competitive thing, right? Where you're like, oh yeah, I want to win. And that's definitely a big part of it. But every Kurtaman player knows what it's, knows what it's like to take a fat L, right? And just <laughs> take I'm sure all the kids in the chat have, you know, can, can empathize with that, right? We've all had that experience. But like the winning is cool too, and that's fun. Um, but really more than anything, at the end of it all, you look back and you're like, wow, look at all the stuff you learned. And I always tried to take that approach with my students. Um, so that has really fueled me to continue um, with Kurtam. And like, even at, at my new school now, um, I think one of the most important things I do, I'm, I'm a seventh grade Latin teacher, right? And I'm trying to sort of create that enthusiasm with my students. And, um, and really that's what's kept me involved in Kurtam and what it can do for students now um, and, you know, the sort of love of learning that it inspires in kids. Mm. And I hate to, I'll, I'll jump in here a little bit and, and toot your horn, just having, uh, so Dave, Dave was actually my Latin teacher, uh, in, in sixth grade. And I think, um, <laughs> if I had to answer the question, like why Kratomen, like, I, I think a big part of it was just being so inspired by like how much it, it clearly meant to you and, um, you know, it, it's infectious. And I think I can say the same thing. It changed my life in a way that nothing else I think ever could have. So, um, Thanks, you know, I to, yeah. Um, yeah. And I was competitive and I wasn't that athletic too. So it was like a perfect fit. So, <laughs> 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 um, but no, yeah. Uh, Parwa, do you have a Wiker Tomlin story? I also want to ask you and yeah, so um, I think my path was probably different from all of yours because I played Kurt Hummen in high school, but um, the way Kurt Hummen in Texas works is um, it's a not all players have the opportunity to um, try out for the state team um, in a lot of years. And uh, I think, you know, in some ways that's going to maybe slowly change um, because of the fact that we're doing more Kurt Hummen that's virtual. Um, but Texas is really big. And so the distances um, make uh, traveling um, almost impossible if you want to have an in-person practice for a state team. Um, and so I played Kurt Hummel in high school, but um, we never won the state championship. So I never got to go to nationals and I just never had the opportunity to go to NJCL. But um, I was inspired by it to become a teacher. And um, so I... Uh, definitely knew I wanted to give my students that opportunity. And I um, eventually wanted to give them an opportunity to um, try to go to NJCL. So um, my first year um, going, taking students to NJCL, uh, it was in Florida. And um, I had a four month old baby that I was um, dragging along with us. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn. So uh, I just was gonna make it work even though I had this four month old and I never, and um, uh, had a blast, I had kids who loved it, um, eventually ended up coaching um, a few um, 
teams that won the national championship of just really great kids who totally inspired me um, to do the work of, of coaching Kurt Hallman. And then, um, you know, more and more just realized what a great community it was and um, am lucky enough to um, be in this position where I get to still hang out with all the Kurt Hallman people, um, even though I didn't get to go to nationals myself as a, a as a student. Um, uh, Emily, I want to I want to hear what keeps you coming back to NJCL because, um, like Ben, you're not uh, in the high school classroom. Um, well, so when I when I got to college, um, I um, my, my, my freshman year in college, fall of my freshman year in college, I ended up becoming VSCL president. Um, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't legally of age yet, but I was VSCL president. Um, and one of, one of my jobs was to run the two state cartomina, the kickoff cartomina in the fall, and then the state cartomina in the spring. Um, and so that sort of kept me in cartomina basically right after high school, um, and, you know, and, and when I was no longer president, I would still, you know, work with the VSEL and like go moderate and, and do that sort of stuff. Um, and I like took some time off before graduate school. So if I was around and could help moderate, I would, but I, you know, I think it was, pro it probably would have fizzled out. Um, but for the fact that nationals in 2003 was in Virginia and they were looking for moderators. So probably Susan Chair. Um, I'm embarrassed to admit that I don't actually remember who's responsible for this. <laughs> um, recruited a bunch of us Virginia, former Virginia Kurtaman players to moderate that year. Um, and several of us stuck around for a variety of years. Um, I think I'm like the last one of that cohort who's still actually moderating. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was mostly that I had the opportunity to keep doing it. Um, and so for much of the time, the only time I actually work with Kurtaman is at Nationals. Um, that's my sort of one chance during the year to, to get back into it. And, you know, it's mostly just because people will let me. <laughs> you know? Well, um, of course, we're always willing to let you, but um, I will say that we have some good news in that in just a, in just a few more minutes, um, we're going to have kind of a Kurtaman style Kahoot game that you can join in on. So don't worry. Uh, you don't have to wait for NJCL this summer to get some uh, Kurtamaning in. I actually, Emily, um, was also at that Virginia convention. Um, by that time, I had I guess a, a five-year-old and a one-year-old um, <laughs> that yeah, were that's also a year after Florida, I think. Yes, that were uh, that I was dragging along with me and um, uh, my uh, my my former student who I brought along as a sitter um, got sick. So then I was juggling these two children, um, and somehow also that's the first <laughs> team I coached that won. <laughs> in the midst of that total chaos. So I, I just have an, my, my Kurtaman memories are all like momming moments uh, <laughs> when I was just trying to survive. <laughs> uh, so uh, speaking of that, since I've gotten to share some, uh, one of my favorite Kurtaman memories of dragging, you know, tiny children around uh, the campus at the University of Richmond, uh, following my Kurtaman kids around, um, we'd love to hear about uh, y'all's favorite Kurtaman memories uh, that you have to share. Um, ben, do you have one ready? Mm. It's so funny. I actually probably should have thought of one beforehand. Um, there are lots of good ones. I was actually just reflecting on uh, your sort of mommy moments. And I made me actually think about like, one thing about Kurtaman that I really appreciated was it taught me how to win, but it also taught me how to, how to take, a, take a big L. <laughs> and at times I felt like a five-year-old early on when I was taking those owls, but, um, I had to, I had to learn how to mature a little bit there, but, um, I felt like a five-year-old. Yeah, no, I think uh, that is a great thing about Kurt Hallman is we, we all, uh, learn how to lose with grace. Yeah. My favorite, I would say like, it's, it's, I actually thought of one. I think my favorite Kurt Hallman memory, um, is actually not a specific memory, but more of a vague memory of just hanging out and studying, um, 
with my friends at, at, we actually kind of later on toward our Kratom, we ended up spending most of our summer days to, to Dave's point about not going with your friends to play basketball or something, but instead studying, we, we ended up spending most of our summers in, inside Starbucks and just whatever, hanging out in a corner and like reading these books and way over caffeinated. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I look back and those are some of the, you know, whatever, those are some of the, the best memories I had of, you know, life in general, but the Kratom experience. <laughs> That's great. Emily, do you have one? It's hard to narrow it down to one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I mean, there's just some, just some like fun memories, like being on the bus and like we'd have music going and like I had a Kratomin outfit, which I actually still have. <laughs> what is it? It was like a men's Oxford oversized Looney Tunes shirt with a Looney Tunes tie and like a blue hat. And that was, that was my, uh, my Kratomin outfit. Um, and like, like even now I can, st like, I still wear it and it's like very, very nostalgic to like put all that on. Um, <laughs> yeah, we need pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're out there and actually I, I can look around cause I actually might, um, there might actually be one on Facebook from a bus trip that a friend posted. So I can go look for it in a second. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I think, I think what, I mean, winning nationals and that whole experience was really cool. And like, I still remember the last song I heard on the radio before going into tryouts, which was Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd. And it was like the most perfect song to hear going into a really stressful situation. Um, but, you know, I think the memory I'm going to go with, and if my mother's watching, she will totally appreciate this. Um, was that first real Kortama I played at, like, well, the first local one that I played at, at my own level. Um, and we were in finals and no buzzer system, right? We're just slapping. And um, it, I don't remember the exact question, but it was asking basically who the goddess of the moon was. And um, I've been told I play with a certain degree of intensity. <laughs> so, so I went in and I answered Cellini and the, the teacher who was moderating who was well, probably about 10 years away from retirement at that point, um, kind of stopped and paused. And I was like, I'm right. Cause it was like, she married Endymion or whatever. And he was hesitating. <laughs> and so I, in my, I have no chill um, at 14, um, was like, it's Lee. I know it's Lee. I can tell you which page of Delari's Greek miss this is on. <laughs> <laughs> That was a total bluff because I probably couldn't have recalled the actual page number when I knew it was in there. Um, and I just like I feel like that just speaks to so much about what made me play. And that teacher, I think, must have retold that story to my mom a half dozen times. Like every time he saw her, he was like, "Oh, that time that your daughter." <laughs> and I was just, yeah, that that that's just a, it's a fun memory because it just. I don't know. I was just so intense and so, no, I'm right. <laughs> no arguing with it. Um, but yeah, just lots of, just lots of good times um, overall. Awesome. What about you, Dave? Do you have a favorite memory? Can you narrow it down? <laughs> it's, really, it's really hard to pick, pick one. Uh, there are so many really, really good ones. Um, you know, the the moments in between are always really great. You know, the bus rides or the um, the ones I always really like were the, were you know, at NJCL sort of walking to the final round kind of with everybody, you know, before it's all happening. And, um, you know, those are great moments. Um, I'll say, I'll give two. two. Um, my first tournament that I played in um, was at a place called Godby High School in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, I won't give away the year, but um, we thought we were like, we were so excited, you know, we were, we were doing great. And then we, um, we ended up losing in the semifinals. And I remember going to Miss Allen afterwards. I was like, Miss Allen, I can't believe we lost. We were supposed to win. I wanted to win. And she, and Miss Allen was this, you know, very charming Southern lady who would always, you know, give Southernisms like, oh, well, David, there's no use crying over spilt milk. And <laughs> And uh, she, she just said to me, well, David, you can't win them all. It's okay. And I was like, how is it okay? She's like, it's fine. You know, so like she would just give these pearls of wisdom like that. And she was so right, of course, right? It's just a, you know, it's just a game. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I think, and not to embarrass Ben too much, but um, I think probably my favorite one of all time is um, 2009 convention was at UC Davis in California. 
And um, the previous year, um, I think Ben would agree, like we took a, a pretty big L um, and, <laughs> and we were, you know, we were just, and there's a whole funny story for another time that, that we'll tell maybe around a campfire about how we took that L, but um, it involves water in a temple, but I digress. Anyway, so um, like, I just remember Ben, his teammates, um, I mean, they worked really hard and they sat in that Starbucks and, you know, they just worked and worked and worked. And, you know, it's never a guarantee, right? That you're gonna, you're gonna win the competition. And like the other kids were really good. I mean, really, really good. And, you know, they, they did, they, they, they won the tournament and it was just sort of, and Ben was a senior and he was in my first, um, uh, sixth grade class, at, at the, you know, as a teacher. And so that was a really special moment, kind of this culmination of so many years of all that work and just really cool. And um, so, yeah, that was a really, really great uh, memory. But, and, you know, all of those, um, you know, kids then are, you know, adults now, and we're, you know, we're all really great friends and, um, you know, some of the closest people in my life. So I just think that was a really great memory for me as a, as a teacher, sort of seeing all that kind of come to a culmination and uh, just a really special moment. So, and there are so many really cool moments like that, that you share with your, with your students or with your friends. And I just think that's what makes Kurtaman so special. Agreed. I'm going to turn my video off and cry a little bit. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 That was, uh, that was great. That I, that round is the round that I was referencing at the beginning that I remember watching Ben uh, play. And I was sitting with one of my former students uh, talking about uh, what, a, what is some of the amazing buzzes that he was having and that kind of thing. So I have uh, vivid, vivid the big memories. ugly cry that we had afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, enough talk about how much fun Kurtaman is. We're going to play Kahoot, which is, you know, uh, the uh, the closest thing we can do right in this moment to play Kurtaman. Although, um, next month on Kurtaman Tonight, or whatever we're going to call this show, we're going to have some students come and let them uh, play against each other in uh, the Zoom chat, uh, 2020 style. Um, but for tonight, um, so... Um, Emily, Dave, Ben, anybody who wants to, you can pull out your device um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, get this um, Kahoot going. Um, we wanna just show uh, a sampling of, there we go, some of the um, questions that are from some old nationals. So some of these are gonna be novice level. Some of these are gonna be more advanced. Um, you can go to kahoot.it to join, or I bet there are some people out there who have the Kahoot app because, you know, they play Kahoot on a regular basis. Um, but our, our code is unus, unus, unus. Duo, Noem, Trace, Queen Quay. Um, so, Unus, Unus, Unus. Duo, Noem, Trace, Queen Quay at Kahoot.it. And we'll get going in just a second once everybody has a chance to, to sign on. Don't want anybody to miss out on the first question, right, Ben? Yeah. That would be a tragedy, just a tragedy. <laughs> All right, so one 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 two nine three five is our pin. Hopefully the music isn't too loud. It's kind of, whew, it's a lot, this Christmas Kahoot music. Yeah. I'm getting pumped up just uh, listening to it. I know, I know. It's 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 very exciting, This the Christmas Kahoot music. Okay, we're gonna have to see how uh, you guys do against these kids who are gonna be playing with us. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's our first question. What is the English meaning of the Latin phrase ETC period? So is it and the rest and others, also these or that is? All right, looks like we've got almost all the answers in. 
We'll give people a, a few more seconds. Let's see. There we go. Um, so most of us got it right. Good job, everybody. Um, ETC period does mean and the rest. All right, let's try our next question. Looks like Snowy Panther's on top. All right, according to Ovid, who drew first blood during the Caledonian boar hunt? So this is, this is obviously a myth question. So we've got the options of Meliager, Atalanta. Oh, and most people knew it was Atalanta who drew first blood. Did you know that, Ben? Um, I would not have known it had I not seen the question beforehand. Yeah, we did practice this one. All right, Snowy Panther is still on top. All right, next question. What was the ancient Roman equivalent of the secret service? Was it Praetorian guards, Frumentarii, Wigilis, or Insecratum? Some good options here, I think. Oh, good. Most people knew it was the Praetorian guards that watched out for the emperor. Oh, expert bison is moving up. All right. The death certificate of your uncle reads D period, S period, P period. What does that indicate? This is a little bit more challenging than that ETC period question. This is more advanced level rather than novice, I think. So we've got died of an unknown cause, died without children, donated his body to science, or divided his wealth. Oh, good. Most people know that it means died without children. Uh, Discusset sine prole, right? All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, Snowy Panther's back on top. All right, let's keep going. What Roman poet displayed his ability to see things from a woman's point of view through a series of fictitious letters? So this is one of those lit questions, kind of about the history of Latin literature. Our options are Juvenal, Virgil, Catullus, or Ovid. Let's see. I think some of these authors were uh, more favorable towards uh, the woman's point of view than others. There's actually one who uh, was very misogynistic. Am I right, Ben, knowing what you know about Latin literature? Yeah. One can make an argument for multiple things. But... Yes. Yes. Okay. We're running low on time on this one. We'll see if we can get those last few answers in in time. All right. So this was a more challenging one since uh, literature questions are just on the advanced level, but this is Ovid. All right. Snowy Panther staying on top. Just a few more questions. Lego means I read. What does lectito mean? It's the vocabulary question for those language lovers out there, of which I am one. So our options are little bed, I begin to read, I read often, or bed. What does lectito mean? All right, we're gonna see if we kind of run out of time on this one. Queen Quay, Quator. Cool. What'd you say, Ben? Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, good. So the majority uh, of people are, or the the people who answered the. Um, the highest number of answers are under I read often, which is what lectito means, but that's a challenging vocabulary word. So expert bison is back on top. 
All right, now we've got a history question coming up. Who, acting as Edile in 33 BC, restored Rome's sewers and built the Aqua Iulia? Busy person. So was it Augustus, Julius Caesar, Agrippa, or Mycenaeus? Lots of good options here. Some toughies, though. Some, uh, some, def some definitely some B sides to your most famous uh, Roman figures. Yeah, yeah. So lots of recognizable names here, but maybe people don't know this little fact. I mean, shocking that they weren't primarily remembered for restoring the sewers. Seems like it'd be a big deal. Uh, yeah, I mean. It's not everyone's favorite job. Certainly, I wouldn't pick it. Oh, look at that. 19 people knew that it was Agrippa. Nicely done, kids. Very well done. All right, expert bison, as we say in my class, Estin Igne, he's on fire. All right, you guys, here's the last question of the night. Qui maritus et uxor, yoi mercurioque placebant, no one templum his deis custodiebant et arbores facti sunt in a shocking twist at the end arbores facti sunt so obviously a myth question but in latin so see if you can figure out what any of those clues mean it could be procne et tereus baucus et pilemon Puramus at Tisbe or Orpeus at Eurudike. Which of these pairs? You have any ideas on this one, Ben? I have an idea. What question? Do you pronounce your Y's as you? I do. I do. Oh, look at that. Lots of people interested in myth know that this is Balkus and Philemon. All right. Let's see. Snowy Panther, Panther in third. Amiable Yak. Wow, they came out of nowhere. Is it Expert Bison? Oh, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Emily, was that you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I like minimized the screen when I went to unmute myself. Nice. Uh, Nice, nice. Well done. Well done, Dr. Husina. Way to win the inaugural Kurtaman Tonight Kahoot. Um, well, uh, we want to thank you guys uh, so much for being here with us and for talking uh, about your Gratomin experiences. Hopefully we um, learned a little bit more about some of the people who are on the Gratomin scene at, in NJCL and have been for a while, but hopefully also we'll get some new people interested in trying out the game. I especially love um, Emily, your story of the local tournament that was just for all newcomers. Uh, we need yeah. we need more of those. I think that'd be awesome. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, ben, thank you for agreeing to do this with me. I'm ex excited to uh, host again with you next month in January. And we want to thank Mr. Kurt Ristroff for making it all happen behind the scenes. Yeah, thank you all. And uh, have a ton of fun. Same time, same place next month. All right, exactly. First Thursday of January. And uh, we will have some uh, some more exciting guests as well as I think we're gonna have about 12 students on. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right, we'll sign off until then. Walete omnes. <laughs>